மறக்காம சர்பிரைஸ் பண்ணுங்க Thank you. Hey guys and welcome back. So this next game uh took place between a very strong GM uh Grandmaster Christian Bauer and much lower rated player uh with the black pieces rated just over 2250 feet. And these types of games are really enjoyable at least for me to to go over because I get to see how like such a strong player can uh make pretty easy work of of still a, a decently rated master. Um and this game was a great example of that. Uh White used some very creative opening preparation and then uh very soon in the middle game got uh, uh a pretty thematic tactic to win material and uh and then win the game. So going forward here, I do want to show the opening because uh it was something you don't see every day in the London after the typical uh first few moves. White deviates from any sort of uh standard London setup by playing this move knight to c3. And this move does come with a trap. Uh if black is careless and plays something like knight to c6, that just walks straight into knight b5. And this is one of the uh one of the main ideas of knight c3. And from this position black is uh is suffering a great deal. Would probably have to play e5 as there's no other uh possible way to defend the the c7 square. Um but then after the very simple d take e5, white is at least winning a pawn. maybe even more let's say the knight moves to g4 white can continue with e6 with the threat of knight c7 and uh and black is not doing well there's also the threat of queen take g4 so black is bound to lose something in this position uh going back to what happened in the game uh black was pretty wise and played this move uh instead of knight c6 he played a6 preventing knight b5 and perhaps putting the question to what this knight is doing on c3 as it no longer has access to the square that it wanted. Uh but white continued development, knight f3, knight c6, and now the immediate knight e5. And I really like this move from white cuz it discourages this bishop from developing, especially developing to the g4 square. Um and this this is something we don't see every day, but if you bring the knight to e5 so early, then the bishop can't uh, can't develop to pin the knight. So it's a useful resource for white. and in this case e5 is very very well supported by both the pawn and the bishop. So black went ahead here traded on d4 and then played bishop f5. And now we're going to see another moment of creativity from white as it looks like the bishop has found a good home on f5. It gets challenged right away with the incredibly strong move pawn g4. Um another move you really have to admire as uh, again it's something you don't see every day uh attacking the bishop And now it looks like black could maybe get away with a simple bishop g6 and just retreat but then uh then white can follow up with h4 and all of a sudden black is under major pressure h5 is coming and it's not entirely clear how black should uh should manage to save the bishop here cuz a move like h5 just walks into the very simple knight takes g6 and this is not the structure that black would want to deal with from so early on in the game especially white having the bishop pair very weak pawn on g6 white could continue with something like bishop d3 and just have an amazing position so um so black didn't go for uh for this retreat bishop g6 he played the rather awkward bishop to e6 which is quite possibly the best move in the position given that uh, black has some later plan of feeding cutting the dark squared bishop Um but going forward here white is happy to to gain space on the queen side having thrown in this move g4 the game continues pawn h3 reinforcing g4 making sure there's no um no troubles later on with the g pawn g6 played and then both sides complete development um and we'll go forward to the tactical moment uh I do want to make a note of white's next move the next move is uh is very subtle but a very typical move to be played especially when you castle queen side that move being king to b1 and there's a few purposes behind this move um not only does it get the king to a safer position it defends this pawn on a2 but it also sets up uh a really nice and somewhat thematic tactical shot against black's queen and we'll see the difference uh very shortly why the king should be on b1 and not c1 to set up the tactic And unfortunately for Black in this position, uh he overlooked the tactical threat, played a somewhat natural looking move, pawn b5. 
And uh, this brings us to the moment where, uh, okay, first white trades on c6, forcing move, and now white goes for the, the really nice tactical shot, knight take d5, where uh, this is winning more than just a pawn, um, because black black's queen is attacked on a5. Uh, black has no time to, to really do anything here. Um, what was played in the game, queen take d2, allows white to play the very nice intermediate knight take f6 check. And I do want to go back and just illustrate, this is why white's king needs to be on b1. If it were on c1, white would have to recapture the queen. But um, having this, uh, this opportunity for an in-between move here, white takes on f6, then after bishop take f6, yet another in-between move, bishop takes c6. And white is uh, is just going to be up a, a full rook in the position. Uh, black actually resigns here if king d8. White can finally recapture the queen and uh, have more than enough to win. So going back, I um, I do want to illustrate you know, the power of alignment. In this case, the queens were aligned along the same diagonal. And this is something you always want to look for when searching for tactics. You want to see which pieces are aligned with your opponent's pieces and how you can potentially take advantage of that. In this case, there are a couple cases of alignment, not only the queens, but also uh, the bishop on g2 aligned with the rook. And then, of course, the power of the in-between move is so strong, because uh, the in-between move is usually uh, one of the most overlooked moves in chess, because usually if, uh, if your opponent takes your queen, you would be inclined to take it back right away. But as we saw, uh, white can, uh, was just able to win material first, and then just be winning the game. So really hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, this one had a, a bit different flavor than uh, the other positions and, and tactics that we've seen. So stay tuned and uh, we'll have more tactics coming up very shortly. Thanks. <laughs>